Good morning. So good to see everyone this morning. Thank you guys for joining us for our worship service. And thanks to all those joining us online as well. Let's all rise to our feet as able. And would you join me in a word of prayer? And let's prepare our hearts together for our worship service this morning.
So good to see everyone once again. Let's go ahead and greet our neighbors in the name of our Lord as we get seated. Well, good morning, church. How is everybody? Cold this morning? We had like spring in February, and now we're back to winter for March. I don't understand what's going on here, and I don't like it, frankly. Um, I'd rather <laughs> give me summer. <laughs> Twelve months a year, give me summer, I'm good. And my wife's like, uh, no. Um, I want to welcome everybody. We're glad you're with us this morning. If you're here with us in person, thanks for coming in this morning. And um, there is a black pad on the end of each row if you would grab that sign in and pass it down let us know you're with us and if you're watching online um, give us a comment or or go uh, somewhere on that video feed there should be a link for online registration um, click on that fill that out that'd be great let us know you're with us um, that would be really awesome so um, again we're glad you're with us thank you for joining us um, and I keep forgetting to do this uh, my name is David Burchett I'm one of the pastors here at Duluth First United Methodist Church, privileged and honored to serve here. Um, can you believe it's going on five years? Can you believe that? Um, going on five years here. Um, yeah, don't know. Y'all need to raise your standards a little bit, just a little. Um, but um, uh, that's who I am. If you're watching and not familiar with me or you're visiting here today, um, that's who, when you email in to complain, now you have a name to send in with your complaint. Um, <laughs> As we go forward, can you believe it is almost time to get ready for what, Karen? BBS. Can you believe it's almost that time? Um, it's coming up. And um, this morning, Karen Phillips is here to share a little bit with us about registration, when it is, all that kind of stuff. And I can, look, don't tell her, but she's going to ask for volunteers too. So just be ready. Um, there, Karen, it's all yours. Well, good morning. I know it's hard to believe, but summer is just around the corner. And if you're a teacher like me, you're probably really excited and counting down the days for a little bit of freedom. If you're a parent, you might be realizing your kids are about to be home with you for two months and you're looking for something 
extra fun for them to do. Well, lucky for you, VBS is back in person this year, which we are so excited about. And best of all, thanks to the generosity of all our church members, it is completely free for kids, which is wonderful. Our theme this year is monumental, celebrating God's greatness, and it's going to take place um, the week of June 13th through 17th, and it's every day from 9 a.m. till noon. Participants get to learn about the Bible through uh, different stations. They do crafts and games, drama, music, and the most important, snacks. Um, our extreme students, our rising fifth and sixth graders, get to serve our community in a different way, which is very special for them. Registration is now open for both participants and volunteers on the church website. Those who register by May 15th get a free t-shirt and a, um, a digital and physical copy of the music that goes along with the week that they'll be learning. Um, we are in need of volunteers too, like David said. We need both adult and youth volunteers. Um, you'll re really just be serving as shepherds, just leading a group of kids around from station to station. There's no prep, it's not hard. That's how I started, and then years down the road, here I am leading the craft section, which is a lot of fun. We have a good time. We do take really good care of our volunteers, too. We provide breakfast, and if you have little ones that aren't ready to participate yet, um, we have the nursery available for volunteers. Um, we really look forward to seeing you this summer, and we hope you'll go on the website and register today. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And they do take care of volunteers. I, I make my way over there for breakfast every, every morning. Then get the kids riled up and then leave. That's, that's my job. Um, thank you for sharing with us, Karen. And we hope you'll, you'll get involved in BBS one way or another. Youth, um, if you're uh, in, a, in the youth group, uh, sixth grade will be part of extreme rising seventh graders, right? No, ri rising sixth. So if you're a rising seventh grader and above, you can volunteer and help and then bring me or men a piece of paper and we'll sign and you get community service hours for your school that you have to have. So we'll help you get those. Um, even if you only sat around and ate all day, we'll still sign you off. Um, so with that, we're gonna continue our praise and worship this morning um, with our act of giving. So if our ushers with those assisting with the offering would come forward. This is like Beauty and the Beast, Mike. You know that, right? <laughs> Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, thank you this morning for all that you give us, that you so graciously share with us all the time. And Lord, now as our act of praise and worship to you, we give back with our offerings and gifts. Lord, we, we we pray that each heart would be blessed and that each gift be blessed for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth in the here and now. Lord, we ask this in the name of your precious and your holy son. Amen. And as we take our offering, are there any prayer concerns that we would like to raise this morning? I, I, I do, yeah, Don. Morgan Macklay passed away yesterday for their for the family uh, of Morgan, um, the good friend of Don's. Others, Don Clayman, that would be. Um, any others? I do. I know we want to keep Russ Sheldon in in our prayers um, as Russ is re recovering and recuperating. Um, any others? Ukraine, everything that yeah, uh, the folks of Ukraine and surrounding and everything that's going on there. Um, Miss Ann. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Diane there fell with the glass in her hand and is now in the process of picking all the glass out of her hand. Um, but we, as far as Tim lets us know, he, she's okay. Any others? Miss Diane. Your son and his wife. Okay.
Okay. Okay. So Diane Womble's son and his wife, right? Did I get it right? Okay. So keep those in our prayer. Any others? Yes, Miss Ann. One more. He is. Okay. Okay, Jeff Schultz, if you weren't aware, Jeff Schultz um, was admitted to the hospital this week um, following a test, and he is now, according to Ann Reifert, he is now out and home, and the, bi the biopsy came back okay. Okay. Um, I want to celebrate. I've got my new associate pastor back today. Maddie Lee is back with us. So, Maddie, if you want to come up, and anytime you want to come help me, just come on up. Um, um, any others this morning? Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, this morning we just come crying out to you for, um, for a word, a word of comfort, a word of peace, a word of, of love and hope. God, so much is going on in a world that we don't understand. We don't, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I'm, everything is jacked up beyond, I just don't understand what's going on. And, and Lord, I just ask that, that your hand reach down and that you would use us in powerful ways and bring revival. And just bring more Jesus into the world right now. I mean, that's what we need. Um, love for neighbor and love for all. Lord, for those prayer concerns we've raised up, would your healing touch be on each one of us? And those that we've raised up out loud and those that each of us carry in with us, would you be with those? For, Lord, the, the celebrations that we're able to raise, we thank you for only are you, through you are these possible. Now, God, is, if, if you would, um, would you bless the reading and the hearing of your word this morning, and would you speak to each one of us? And may each one of us be transformed more into the likeness of your son Jesus by your word today. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the gift of your son above all else. In his precious name, amen. As we continue through the season of Lent in our preparation for Easter, I invite you to join me with 2 Corinthians 5, verses 6, 16 through 21 from the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. Paul says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And I know some of you are hearing that, and man, I don't know what you just read. All I heard was reconcile and reconciling and reconciliation. And, and, but th this passage is so so powerful, for lack of a better word. Um, and as we move towards Easter through the season of Lent, this season where we, 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 we look inside and we, we take a look at who we are and what we believe and how we're leading our life and what's going on and, and that we are, uh, we are not perfect and we need a Savior. And we look at this through the season of Lent. And um, this passage touches something that... Um, is so prevalent in this part of the country. And when I say that, um, I mean folks that 
go to church. And we have this, we have this kind of phenomenon in the, in the southern part, the Bible Belt, we call it, of what we call cultural Christianity. Y'all know what that is? Um, we go to church because that's what good people in the South do, is go to church. Um, that what happens there really doesn't have an effect on Sunday afternoon through Saturday night, but hey, we're in good shape because we're in church on Sunday morning. And what happens is we, we, we begin to live this life of moralism or legalism, two different things. But in the South, we begin, that's the life we begin to lead, right? Um, and, and not just here, but, but it is prevalent here. And this passage, Paul, God's word through Paul completely says that don't work. Because what we do, tell me if I'm wrong, we have this tendency to look at life and look at everything through this kind of horizontal view, right? Our worldview becomes kind of this horizontal deal. And we think about our relationships with other people. And, and we think about how we deal with other people and what we say and what we do. And that's where this legalism and moralism comes in. Moralism is this, this, this worldview, this lifestyle of, well, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I, I, I go to work. I'm nice to people. I go to church um, every Sunday. I'm nice to people. Um, I do the right things. And, and that, therefore, I'm good in, this, in the sight of God. And that's not, that's not the gospel. Or legalism says um, that here's the list and here's the laws, and I have to obey all these laws. I can't, I can't um, um, do anything against these laws, and, but we can't do that, right? Hence, the whole reason for Jesus. If we could have kept the law, then there w what would have been the need, right? So Paul goes through this whole thing that just, that just says, no, I need to change your perspective. You need a new perspective. And, and he starts right off the bat in, in verse 16. He says, from now on, therefore, okay, anytime you see therefore, He's saying, because of what I just told you, this is what you need to do, and this is really important. So what has he said? The last couple of verses he, he's been talking about, for the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one, Jesus has died for all, therefore all have died. Through the death of Christ and the work he did on the cross, then if we place our faith in Christ, then we die to our sin in this world, and then we are raised again with Christ. Okay, you with me? And just a pre Warning this morning, buckle up because I'm fixing to get wound up today. Okay? So we, we, we die to our sin and to our, our life and are raised in Christ. And then he goes on to say, and he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised. So when we are raised from this death, we now live for Christ and in Christ. Okay, you with me? Everybody good? So Paul says, because of all that, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. E e even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. So what's Paul saying? Paul says that, that we used to look on this lateral, I mean, this horizontal worldview of everybody. And we considered everybody. We, we looked at people and thought of people as, as the world views them. Okay. As somebody we like, we don't like, they're annoying, they're friends, they're whatever, or um, um, they're Republican, they're Democrat, they're conservative, they're liberal, they are gay, they're straight, they are tall, they're short, they are annoying, they are friendly. All of these ways that we describe people and look at people, Paul says no more. That, that's, that's, that's the horizontal view and relationships that we have. But because, and we used to view Jesus, Paul says, I even used to view Jesus that way. He was just another man until Jesus got hold of me. And Paul says, now Jesus is Lord. And he says, I don't view him as man anymore. And he says, so our perspective now needs to switch and swing, and we view other people horizontally. We view them as God sees them. Not as humans see them anymore, but as God sees them, because God sees our hearts. 
And that's how people, that's how God views people through their hearts. And that's how we need to look at people. That is God's child. Yeah, they may be annoying and they may be, I don't like being around them, but God loves them. And that is God's child. And therefore, I have to see them through God's eyes and with God's heart that they are God's child. And take it a step further. Not only is that person God's child, that person you really don't want to be around, and not only does God love them with a passion so great that he gave his son on the cross, but that person in God's deepest desires, that person is to be your brother or sister in Christ. Not just some Joe Smo out there that but God's desire is for them to find faith in Christ and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and become a follower of Jesus. And now he becomes your brother or your sister. And if they don't, then they face an eternity without God. And God says, I want you to look at them that way. That how you think of them, how you love them, how you treat them, the way you are to them can influence whether they become a son and daughter of God or spend eternity without God. So God knows our hearts and that's how he looks at people and that's how he's asking us to look at people through his eyes. Everybody is important in God's eyes and everybody is loved in God's eyes because Jesus died on the cross for who? For everybody. For for God so loved the world, not for God so loved David, but God loved everyone, even the people we don't like. And yet, Paul says, you gotta love them anyway. You gotta see them how God sees them. And then he goes on to say, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God. This is the coolest thing. And I know I've said this before, but I want you to understand me. And if, if, you're, if you're watching online and, and you're just checking this thing out, somebody said, hey, look, you need to, and you're just checking this whole Jesus thing out, you got to understand this. What happened on that cross was a great, a greatest exchange ever known to mankind. We come to the cross loaded with sin, born with a sinful nature, And sorry for the grammar police, we were born not able to not sin. All you teachers out there that are ready to throw darts at me, I apologize, but that's the best way I know how to say it. And we come to Christ on the cross and God says, let me have all of that and places it on the shoulders of Christ on the cross to take the payment we can't pay that we owe so that justice is done in God's eyes. And in exchange for that, he takes all of our sin and what does he give back? He gives back his righteousness for each one of us so that then we are blameless and holy and righteous in God's eyes. The greatest exchange ever, a price we can't pay that Jesus willingly pays for us and then gives us righteousness. And with that righteousness comes a new creation within us. The old creation hangs on the cross with Jesus and leaves the new creation comes with Jesus' righteousness and everything in our life changes. It's not an overnight, we're perfect, but then begins the journey and a new life begins and we have hope and we have life in Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes on to say, all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ God, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. 
God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So here's my question. If I come to the cross and give my life to Christ and I become a new creation, all my sin is taken away and paid for. The price is paid. I am now a new creation, righteous in God's eyes, made holy in God's eyes. Why don't I just right there stop, go to heaven? Why, why, why? Why is life not over? And I just go, you know, and we, tell, we start by telling kids, you know, if you're good, you go to heaven. If you accept Christ, you go to heaven. It's go to heaven, get to heaven, get to heaven. And then when we do, then we're still here. Two things. Number one, eternal life doesn't begin on the day we die, and it's not someplace far away up above the clouds that's waiting on us to get there someday. Eternal life begins the minute that you accept Christ. Because eternity and going to heaven is a lifetime in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So it begins the day we accept Christ. And number two is, and we don't like this one much, God chooses to use us. God chooses to use us. Some of us go through life wondering, what's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I doing? What am I supposed to do? And Paul tells you right here what your purpose and your mission in life is. Because God has this purpose and this mission in the world of everybody shall come to know him through Christ. And every knee will bow and everybody will be saved. And we are charged how cool is this? The creator of the universe who hung the stars individually in the sky tells the sun when to come up and when to go down. And all of that says, David, I need you to come work with me and help me do what I need to do. That's pretty cool. He uses us. We have a purpose and a mission. We are to be ambassadors for Christ. Because here's the deal. When we went to the cross and we gave our sin up and he gave us his righteousness, okay, at that point, we were reconciled to God. What, is, what does that mean? Reconciliation is when two parties can't agree on something, right? We are, I said it earlier, born with a sin nature. We were born not able to not sin. God cannot stand to be in the presence of sin. Therefore, there needs to be some way to reconcile. God loves us so much that there, he wants some way to reconcile us back together. And through Christ on the cross, that happens and he accomplishes that. So now we are reconciled and now our job, our purpose is to go and to help reconcile others to Christ. We are to be the ambassador. We are to spread the word. We, an ambassador, has the authority of where he's from or she is from to speak for that country or whoever appointed them ambassador. God gives us the authority to speak on his behalf to others that don't know Christ yet. So here's the thing. As you go to school tomorrow, students, as you go to work tomorrow, or if you're retired and, and you go, um, I don't know what y'all do. I haven't got that far yet. Um, but wherever you go, you're, 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 we have this, this kind of misunderstanding of my job, my mission, my focus is my job. Or to make good grades. Those things are important. But first and foremost, you're a child of God who's been reconciled through Christ, and now you are to be an ambassador for Christ, and that comes above and beyond everything else in your life. Through how you live, through how you treat people, through how you view others, and even when necessary, using words. We are to be ambassadors. And here's the thing. It doesn't say, Paul does not say, this has been entrusted to pastors. This has been entrusted to small group leaders. This has been entrusted to worship leaders. Paul says this duty has been entrusted to us, capital U, capital S, not, not just pastors, not just small group leaders, but you and I, all of us. 
are entrusted with this. And then to close this up, Paul really just does away with legalism, with moralism, with any other thing. And, and he says in verse 21, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We have a problem, folks. We're born with a sinful nature. We can't solve it. No matter how hard we try, we can't be good enough. No matter how much we want to give, we can't pay enough. No matter if we can't earn it, there's nothing. There's only one way. It doesn't matter how good we are to other people. It doesn't matter how many rules we follow and that we, we're, we're this good. And I'm better than my next door neighbor. That's got to say something for me. No, God says there's only one way. And I did it through Christ who led sinless life, died a criminal's death to pay the price for us that we can't pay. That's the only way we can be reconciled. And when that happens to you and your life is changed, then you tell that story to others. And I don't care whether your testimony is Hey, I was selling crack on the corner at four and I got arrested at six and spent some time in prison. And then at eight, I was let out and joined the gang. Um, and then I found Jesus. That's an exaggeration, but aren't those the testimonies we hear? Or the coolest testimony in the world is, you know what? I was born into a Christian home, a true Christian home. My parents followed Christ. My siblings did. I've never known anything but knowing Jesus. And I came to a point where I have a, a relation, personal, intimate relationship with Christ on my own. Not my parents, not my Sunday school teacher, not my preachers, but my own. That testimony, while some of you will say, that's boring, I don't measure up, that's the coolest testimony in the world. No matter which of those testimonies you have or in between, God's asking us to share the difference Christ on the cross made in our lives and the new life it gave us and the changed life that came about because of that. We are ambassadors and there's only one way to have new life, not by how good we are, not by following the rules, but by faith in Christ. Gracious and loving God, we thank you this morning for all that you have done for us, for the gift of Jesus, the sacrifice of your own son out of your love for us. Lord, let us rest in that, and may we be ambassadors for everyone that we come into contact with. And may we thank you for using us, and may we through your power and your son, Jesus, begin a revival. Lord, we ask this in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. Um, if you've been with us over the last month and a half, I guess, um, we've been, the capital campaign has been going on, and last week was to retire the, the mortgage on the building, and last week was uh, consecration Sunday, and we and we did that. Everybody brought their commitments up, and we and we prayed over that. And today, um, there's a couple of things that I'm going to mention later that are going to happen. But um, Kay Montgomery um, is coming up now, so come on up, Miss Kay, and she's going to share. Oh, she's bringing her checkered flag. Um, she's going to share with us a little bit about the the capital campaign. There, so there you go, Miss Kay. Doesn't David do a great job oh, in this great place? Thank you, David. We're so lucky to have you. Uh, back on February the 6th, we started a capital campaign, and it has been very successful. And today's the last day. <laughs> you, you might be glad to hear that because we have to talk about it. We had hoped to raise $1.3 million. As of this morning, we have raised $1,794 thousand six hundred and seventy dollars now we had a, a big donation from Russ and Melanie Sheldon 
and they made it possible to name this entire building after their family. So this will be called the Sheldon Center or Family Life Center. But we're going to have a celebration today, and all of you are invited. So don't think that you're not. We appreciate any donations that you made. If you didn't get around to it, we want you to come to the celebration anyway. So right after this service, in just a few moments, we're all going out in the parking lot down here, and they're going to have a little celebration about the naming of the center. Then we're all invited back for hors d'oeuvres. So we want you to have a little light lunch with us here right after that. Uh, because we made more than we had planned on, the money that is separate from that will go towards our long-term facilities maintenance fund, which we have a facility here that sits on 17 acres of land and enclosed is 90,000 square feet in the Duluth First United Methodist Church. There's always bills to pay. There's always something coming up, a new roof or whatever. So that extra money, we're so grateful, will go towards that. Thank you so much for listening to me, and be sure to participate in our celebration right after this. Thank you, Miss Kay. Now, I got to apologize for calling her out last week for being... All she was doing was being friendly and welcoming visitors, and I'd call her out in front of everybody. I can keep it? Are you turning me loose with a prop? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Um, let me get situated here. We, we um, as we, that would be in the way of her lyrics, and she wouldn't be able to read what she was singing, and I don't. Um, Ms. Kay mentioned that there was, there was a large gift given for the naming of our Family Life Center. It will from now on be known as the uh, Sheldon Family Life Center uh, for Russ Sheldon's parents. And we are uh, going to have a little litany of dedication for the building. So I would in, I invite you to join me with what's up on the, on the screens. I and mean, we're all saying this together, okay? This is not just me. The whole thing is everybody. So are you ready? Here we go. Loving God, without you, no words or works of ours have meaning. Accept this gift and grant your blessing as we dedicate the Sheldon Family Life Center to your glory, that it may be an enduring witness before all your people, and that our lives may be dedicated in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, and before they close us. Um, I invite anybody that's been visiting with us, if you, if you would like to make this your church home, I invite you to come forward during this last song, and we will take care of that. Or if you're watching online and you would like to join us, contact um, Beth Shugart, Reverend Beth Shugart, and she will make sure that that happens. Um, but I, I just I want to say something that um, y'all have no idea, Kay, I appreciate the kind words, but y'all have no idea how hard these people work. I mean, none. Um, they, uh, this young man in the middle, Min Lee, um, and when his wife gets mad at him, it's Michael Lee. So take your pick. You can choose. Um, but Min um, puts in, I don't know how much time, choosing songs, doing arrangements, making, making sure everything is communicated and out there. And then these folks, I, they prepare during the week when they get here on Sunday morning. They're here early, folks. I mean, they beat y'all here. Um, they're here early. They're practicing and running through and rehearsing, and they're all prepared when they get here. It's not like, okay, now show me what I'm supposed to do. When they get here, they are prepared and ready to go. Um, and they do this every week. We don't pay them. They do it out of their heart and their love for Jesus and the love of their church. So... Uh, for all of those that are up here this morning and for those that are not here this morning, if you're watching online, which I hope you are, we thank you with all of our hearts. We cannot do this without y'all. Y'all are amazing. I, I, y'all are way above what anything I could hope to be. Thank you all for your hearts and your talents and your gifts and your willing to share them with us and your commitment to this service and this church. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, 
and I don't thank them enough. So I just wanted to, to take that. Um, you know, I'm the guy that stands up here and everybody pats on the back, and so, but they're the ones who make this thing go. So now, if you would, stand as you are able and join us in our closing song this morning.
All God's people said, amen. Have a seat, a couple of announcements before we have our benediction. Um, if y'all see me coming up here still putting my earpiece on, that is done for your benefit, so you don't hear me singing over the house. So that's why that is done that way. A couple of announcements before we go. Um, Ms. Kay mentioned immediately following this service in the back, back uh, parking lot, uh, other side of the portico will be the naming ceremony for the building. So we, we encourage you to be there for that. And then immediately after that, back in this room, uh, we will have hors d'oeuvres and a celebration of the uh, capital campaign. So we invite you to come to, to both of those, one right after the other. And then Karen mentioned, um, don't forget to sign up, register for uh, Vacation Bible School. The actual Bible school is June 13th through the 17th. You can register now online. And we encourage you to register early. And there is no charge for Vacation Bible School. So remember that as you sign up. And youth, um, men and I are encouraged. We're not encouraging. We're telling you. Um, sign up so you can help. Um, <laughs> you don't have a choice. Um, and then, last of all, uh, it's time to sign up if you would like to order Easter lilies for to be here on Easter. That... Um, that insert is in your Sunday supplement. It's right here. You can fill that out and, and turn that in. Ken, can they do that online too? Preferred online, Ken Willie tells me. So if that's, if that's you and you would like to do it online, um, make sure you get those ordered. Uh, through April 10th, I think, is the deadline. Correct, Ken? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by a cutie, cute little girl up here. Um, now, if you would, if you would stand for our benediction and our sending forth. As we go from this place as sons and daughters of God, may we go knowing that we are ambassadors in Christ and that God is using us in powerful and mighty ways. And may we show that. May we show God's love to everyone we come in contact with. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.